Hey everybody, Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my video today. It's all about Carnival. Will Carnival survive? And hey, do they pay any taxes in the US? Let's talk about the entire company from top to bottom and let's check it out. Thank you for subscribing to my channel, Traveling with Bruce. Thank you for giving my videos thumbs ups and leaving comments. I love it when you leave comments. Just, you know, PG rated, please. Um, also, thanks, guys, for joining my Facebook group page. A lot of my viewers hang out on my Facebook group page between these videos. And we have over 2,500 followers there now. It's amazing. We were only at 1,000 a little while ago. And thank you for joining in to Instagram. Jennifer, my wife, uh, my Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife, she handles the Instagram account. And uh, we're over 420 followers. It's unbelievable how that's growing. Thanks for coming aboard. All right. Well, let's talk about Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, I'm going to give you some information that I gleaned out of the annual report for 2019. Um, and just some other general information. Uh, first thing I'll tell you is this is a big company. Uh, when people say, hey, are these guys going to survive? Um, my short answer is, yeah, I think so. Um, but let me give you some ideas about just, just let me tell you how big these people are. Uh, they have 150,000 employees worldwide, 150,000, and they're not just on cruise ships. They handled 13 million guests in 2019. Um, they run these cruise lines. They run Carnival Cruise Line, of course, Princess Cruise Lines, Holland America. They run and own Cunard. They own P&O, which runs out of uh, Great Britain, UK. They run Costa Cruises, A AIDA, that's spelled A-I-D-A, AIDA Cruise Lines, which is the basically for the German market, very popular. P&O Australia, they run that operation, and they have a luxury division called Seaborn. And Seaborn is very much loved by its uh, clientele. Here's some more numbers for you, just to kind of put this in perspective. In 2019, they brought in gross revenues of $20.8 billion. These are American dollars. These are the good ones. $20.8 billion came in the front door. $17.5 billion went out to, to run the business. That's the cost of running this behemoth corporation. Net income, $3.27 billion dollars. And after uh, income before taxes, after a couple more write-offs, they had $3.06 billion. Let's just round it off to $3 billion bucks that they cleared. And they paid taxes, by the way, of $71 million. They're not a U.S. corporation, so they don't have to pay U.S. Uh, corporate tax. But folks, don't be misled by this number. Um, you have probably seen um, news articles over the last four, five, seven years talking about how some of the biggest corporations that are U.S. based pay virtually no tax because they get all of these tax breaks and everything else. Uh, I can tell you Carnival would be taking advantage of the same write-offs if they could. They can't take advantage of write-offs like they can, like other companies can that do pay taxes. But nonetheless, they did pay $70 million in taxes directly. But that doesn't tell you the whole story. Um do they pay taxes otherwise? Actually, yeah, they create a lot of tax revenue otherwise. Um, let me give you some ideas here, some uh, some thoughts. They have 104 ships, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. But um, uh, here's some, some ideas. $2.5 billion was spent by the company on U.S.-based staff and their selling expenses. Now, all their employees that work there, including the chairman, they all pay income tax. They all pay state tax. They all pay unemployment insurance. Uh, they all have health plans. Um, they also paid out $1.4 billion of dividends, and dividend income is taxable. So the U.S. Treasury actually collects money from individuals and entities that own stock in Carnival. Now, before the shares crapped out, and uh, we're running around along here at $57 a share, you know, at their, at their high a few months ago. Anyone who was selling the stock at a profit, they were paying a capital gains tax. It might have been reduced, but they were still, still paying it. All the goods and services that the company buys, think about uh, turnaround day when a ship comes into Miami or Fort Lauderdale, Port Canaveral, Jacksonville, Tampa, just to name a few Florida ports. When the ships come in, any of these Carnival brand ships, they have to uh, offload their passengers, of course, and bring on the new passengers, but they also have to offload 
all the waste materials and pay to remove that. And then they have to pay to bring in all the food for the week. And, you know, if you're working out of, uh, let's say your home port is uh, Miami, you can't bring in vegetables from a, a, a third country and avoid taxation. It has to come from Florida growers and across the U.S. You want to bring in alcohol, uh, you know, that uh, that uh, Jim Beam that you want, uh, that's made in the U.S.A. There's a lot of taxes involved in alcohol production and sales. Um, the soda is purchased domestically, all the other food, all the uh, items for their gift shops on board. It's all purchased tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars a year uh, commissions payable to travel agents just think about that you've got 17 billion dollars in expenses a bunch of those uh you know that money had to come from somewhere 20 billion came in the front door well a lot of it's coming in from the fares and those fares have commissions payable to a travel agent so a lot of travel agents making money and paying taxes advertising have you ever seen advertising from any carnival cruise line Yes, you have, and uh, whether it's something in the mailbox, on your e, uh, on your uh, on your uh, computer, uh, or whether you're watching an ad on CNN or MSNBC, they're advertising like crazy. Even those billboards, those are uh, advertising agencies that are U.S. Those are uh, Americans that are hired, and a lot of those are American-based entities advertised on. So a lot of money made, a lot of taxes paid. Credit card fees is another one. Uh, how many of us pay for our cruises using our credit card? And how many of us pay for our onboard expenses at the end of the cruise with a credit card? There are credit card fees that are generated by this company. Millions. The bankers love these guys. Um, that just gives you some basic uh, ideas there. Um, other other info for you. Um, total assets that they have are forty five billion dollars. That's all of their uh, all of their uh, ships and uh, their buildings and uh, and uh, interests that they have elsewhere. Um, what else are I going to tell you about this company? Uh, they have they have loans outstanding, and, and this is where where I'm going to talk to you about how they're going to survive. Their long term debt ten and a half billion dollars, forty five billion in assets. They owe ten billion against it. These folks are very uh, well off, very well to do. They're they're mostly paid for, bought and paid for. Yes, they have ships on order, but worth maybe four or five billion bucks. It's a fraction of what this company is actually worth. Uh, it's quite a stunning uh, um, set of numbers when you kind of look at it. In the last year, they bought back $603 million of their own shares. They're trying to reduce the number of shares outstanding, so they bought $600 million of their stock last year. They can buy up to a billion a year under uh, uh, SEC rules, but uh, they, didn't, they didn't use it all up. But uh, they, re they reduced the numbers of shares outstanding. It's true. Today, the shares are a fraction of what they were two months ago because, of course, things have changed. Um, I want to tell you another little story about Carnival, and uh, I got a kick out of this story. Uh, I saw it the other day uh, on the Cruise Law News uh, website. Um, Jim over there is running a great show. He's a lawyer, and, and he commented on a deal that uh, Carnival had made with FEMA uh, a couple of years ago. If you recall, uh, a few years ago, there was a series of hurricanes that ravaged um that ravaged the San Martin, St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, Hurricane Irma, and Hurricane Maria. You remember those? Well, St. Thomas, which is a U.S. Uh, protectorate, um, was really beat up. And um, all the power lines were down, their water systems and highways destroyed. A uh, vast majority of the resorts uh, were all literally washed out, destroyed. Uh, and the island went into a bit of a, a real mess for a while. There were a lot of people uh, wondering what was going to happen there. The uh, National Guard was brought in to settle things down. And then uh, FEMA came in to help uh, establish a temporary housing and, and get things up and running again, including the airport, which uh, had lost its entire radar system and uh, the terminal was badly damaged and on and on it went. So billions of dollars had to go into St. Thomas to uh, get it up and running. And one of the things that FEMA needed was not only uh, 1,500 to 2,000 workers, they needed a place to house these people. They didn't want to take away housing from the locals who are already scrambling with tarps over their roofs and so on. They didn't want to take that away. They didn't want to take any of the functioning hotels away. They thought, well, what we'll do is we'll bring in a cruise ship. So they contacted Carnival, and they brought in the Carnival Fascination for four months. 
Now, the Carnival Fascination at the time uh, was sailing, and uh, they had to cancel all their cruises. And so what Carnival did was, like any company would do, they um, offered a credit for a future cruise to all the folks who had booked on the Carnival Fascination, and uh, they made the uh, they got the ship ready. They sailed it over to St. Thomas, and they immediately began to house FEMA workers uh, on board the ship. And... Um, uh, it's the numbers that fascinate me. Now, now uh, uh, it's Jim Walker over at uh, Cruise Law News. Great guy. Uh, hey, Jim, how you doing, by the way, if you're watching? Uh, Jim was quoting that FEMA, the FEMA deal came in at $74.7 million. That's how much money Carnival was paid by FEMA for this four-month contract. And I looked at that, and I went, wow, you know, on the surface, that sounds exorbitant, it, really ridiculous. And uh, it probably is. But on the other hand, what choice did FEMA have? <laughs> They they couldn't put up enough tents to house these workers. And what if another hurricane system came through? Uh, at least if they had all their workers on a cruise ship, they could bug out and move the ship to a, to a place for a week or so or a couple of days and then come back to St. Thomas and go back to work again. Um, the ship could also house a lot of the uh, tools and, 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 and equipment, you know, smaller based equipment that you know, they were running with. But they could be fed there. They could be housed there. They would all have air conditioning. The Wi-Fi worked. Uh, the plumbing worked, and there was a crew on board the ship ready to go, you know, were able to help and, and, and look after these people. So uh, not much in the way of choice. Now, I broke this down in a couple of ways. The first thing I did was I figured out if there were 1,500 workers uh, that were housed here on average for four months, it would have come in at about $400 a day per worker, seven days a week to house these people. Now, the workers were probably brought in on... Uh, on uh, you know, like 30-day contracts, maybe given a week off and then worked another 30 days. I'm not exactly sure of this, but it, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is the ship was was completely chartered by FEMA for their workers, and they could have had as many as 2,000 at a time on board there because the ship's designed to hold up to 2,500 people. Um, so around 400 a day, it might have been down to as low as 300 a day if the ship was up to 2,000 people, but, uh, you know, I figured 400. Now, in lieu of, of this, the sh they could have said, Carnival could have said, no, no, we're not going to, we're not going to do this deal. We're going to keep the fascination at sea because, you know what, we bring in, uh, you know, with, with, with uh, our, our expending and whatnot on board, we're, we're going to bring in a thousand bucks a passenger because we, you know, we sell them booze, shore excursions, we got the casino running because after all, in, in St. Thomas, there's no casino for these guys. Uh, no alcohol sales for these workers at FEMA either. I mean, the ship was just a dry... It was a dry ship, a plate like a hotel without a bar or a casino. No entertainment. Um, they had no other way to bring in extra money, per se, because they had to make, a, make it as a package deal. However, you rent it out or, or, or run it as a cruise ship, you can charge extra to uh, paying passengers for all kinds of services. The spa, the retail shops on board, like I said, the casino, the premium dining, all the ways that cruise ships can make extra money. Um, so they gave that up instead. I will still say though, and I agree with Jim Walker, it was a sweet deal for uh, Carnival. They, they probably made a $30 million uh, profit over and above having the, uh, having the ship out at sea as it was. So they did quite nicely, but nonetheless, the ship was, uh, was made available. All cruises canceled. The ship was brought in and uh, female workers were housed and, uh, the island, uh, you know, St. Thomas uh, got a lot of improvements made in an awful hurry because there were highly skilled uh, contractors available to work the island at the airport and all other spots uh, that needed to, to be repaired. So in the end, the American people were served by uh, having these 1,500 to 2,000 workers brought in. Now, today we're talking about the disaster that's hitting the world. Uh, what's going to happen now? Will uh, Carnival ships be made available uh, or will they be needed by the American government to either um, uh, help with the health care needs or, or temporary uh, shelters? What? Uh, there's uh, so many homeless in the United States. There are so many people who, who are maybe in need of hospital care. How is this going to play out? We're going to have to watch this uh, going forward. But again, with all nine cruise lines uh, added in, we are talking about 104 ships 
um, you know, 10, 15, 20, uh, we never know, might be sequestered or required by the U.S. government. Some might be needed in the Seattle area because of the Washington state uh, issues that they're having up there. Some might be needed in the San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego area. Some of the ships might be needed uh, in and around Florida or off the coast of Texas. And some might be needed up towards uh, New Jersey and New York. We, we just don't know. Uh, we're going to find out in the next couple of weeks just how this all, you know, goes. And uh, will any of these ships be needed as sort of uh, quasi-quarantine locations or recovery locations? Uh, there are a lot of hospitals in the U.S. who want to depopulate their hospitals if they can for uh, patients that are not suffering under the current uh, issues and have their hospitals dedicated solely to this uh, event that we're talking about that I can't mention right now uh, due to YouTube regulations. Um, we're going to have to see how this plays out. Uh, will this happen or not? Or will the cruise line go back into business in the near term? Um, and by the way, speaking of the cruise line, one more time, um, $45 billion in assets, $10 billion in debt. They just drew down a $3 million credit line that they had on standby, so they're now $13 billion into the uh, bankers. They could easily draw down another $5 billion without even blinking. And we're talking about borrowing money at between 3 and 4% interest rates. Can you folks borrow uh, three months of household money at uh, 4% interest? Or would you have to take a cash advance on your credit card at 18 or 20%? Think about the difference, the power that this company has versus just you and I as individuals. It's really amazing. The company, of course, is going to reduce their expenses right now. They're going to, obviously, they've reduced their expenses now by having no passengers on board. It's a lot less expensive to run a ship without anyone on it. But uh, still, you know, each ship costs so much money per month to keep floating and keep operating. But uh, like I say, going forward, uh, they may make income from the U.S. government or uh, maybe in a month or a month and a half or two months, uh, certain cruises might begin again. And they might well be three-nighters uh, from Florida to a private island and back. It might be uh, a quick run to Nassau and back <clears throat> where you don't get off the ship. It might be, uh, uh, you know, these kinds of these kinds of uh, cruises for princes might be to Princess uh, Princess uh, K. Uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. Uh, will the cruise lines be in full blown cruise mode uh, by summertime? I don't know, but these companies here can, you know, Carnival in particular, they can, you know, ramp up for each line, three or four or five of their ships, and slowly every week add another ship to their itinerary and uh, work it that way. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll follow it. Thank you today to all of you for joining me. Uh, thanks again for, for being a follower of my channel. Hope I haven't bored you too much with all this info on Carnival, but I, I find it fascinating, this company, as big as they are and as diverse as they are. Um, we'll keep you posted on what's going on out there. In the meantime, stay warm, stay safe, and stay healthy, and thanks, everybody. Bye for now.